the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the finance minister quoted an economist to try to justify the government's decision to send the province 20 years back with their back in debt budget. Let me quote another economist, Jack Mintz. Now, while I don't agree with uh, Dr. Mintz, Professor Mintz, on his advice to the government to bring in a sales tax, I do agree with him on this. He says the government's $17 billion borrowing plan is contrary to sound public policy because, and I quote, a jurisdiction with non-renewable resource revenue should be saving rather than borrowing funds, unquote. How does the Premier justify going so deeply into debt contrary to this advice? Well, Mr. Speaker, we are saving. We have a fiscal management plan that we introduced last week in the legislature that for the first time, Mr. Speaker, in 25 years is saving Alberta resource revenue, Mr. Speaker. And I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, we are proud of that, and the reason we're doing it is because we listened to Albertans who told us that saving was a priority in good times, Mr. Speaker, and in challenging times. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think the Premier missed the emphasis on the borrowing part. The $17 billion in borrowing is what Mr. Mintz says that we shouldn't be doing, because he says that borrowing is a double dip against future generations. And this is because provinces with natural resources are already borrowing significant amounts from the future already, since they are selling off physical assets that would provide support to future generations. So how can the Premier justify this double-barrel borrowing from future generations? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's interesting that the Honourable Member opposite wants to pick one piece of Mr. Mintz's uh, suggestions and ignore the other pieces, because in order for you to do the one piece that he's suggesting, you have to do the other piece, which is the sales tax, Mr. Speaker, which this side of the House is saying no to, Mr. Speaker. I would also point out, Mr. Speaker, that we're going to take some good advice from those in this province who are creating the economy and creating jobs, like the Alberta Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, it supports the provincial plan to leverage its solid credit rating to borrow at today's low interest rates in order to proactively build infrastructure structure to accommodate Alberta's growth. We're building Alberta, Mr. Speaker, while we're living within our means, and we're saving, which they aren't doing, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there is another way, Mr. Speaker, they could balance the budget without raising taxes and without going into debt. Yeah, yeah. The Premier justifies huge borrowing, ignores the need to pay back the debt at all, and also ignores the effect of selling off non-renewable natural resources to pay for day-to-day -day operations. When will the government begin to act responsibly and stop double-dipping into the futures of our kids and grandkids? No, Mr. Speaker, this, this is coming from a, an opposition that presented, uh, a, I guess they call it a budget. It's interesting, and I, I guess we should understand why they're having difficulty reading financial statements in their budget. There are no financial statements, Mr. Speaker. There's no statements at all. Mr. Speaker, it, it does not serve the Alberta public not to build the schools, not to build the hospitals, not to build the ro roads that they're going to need for tomorrow's growth. Mr. Speaker, living within your means means you make prudent, responsible choices, which is exactly what this Premier and this government have done.